become 15 executive director. Okay. Um, the first thing I'd like to start off with is um, you may have met him already, but Michael Sims, uh, PE, is here on board. He's the new uh, compliance enforcement director. You'll be hearing more and more good things from him. But uh, he did a really good job laying out policy advisory in his first chance at the hot seat, so thank you for that. And uh, he'll be working more toward outreach and getting fully up to speed. But he's doing a great job of picking stuff up. Um, so welcome to the show. Any uh, comments? Speech? <laughs> That's another good thing. He helps counter the fact that I yak too much. So. <laughs> All right. And he's taller than you. Just uh, that's, that's a given. That's a good one. <laughs> um, daily activity report is included here. If you have any questions about any of the events uh, on my calendar, I'll be happy to answer those. All right. um, the next thing is strategic plan journey toward excellence. This is just a summary last time around after we had our board uh, feedback workshop. wanted to provide uh, some input on that as well as we had a um, staff retreat soon after the board one. So this is just a providing an agenda here and what we talked about. Um, one of our, part of our strategic planning is obviously to gather the guidance from the board as well as input from the public. And then we include maybe different than other state agencies to some extent. Every single staff member gets to be involved and give the feedback on how to make the agency better and everything we do. So we collect that information. We have it in a, this time it was retreat, but we retreated pretty much to this room, so we didn't retreat to somewhere else. We came here. But we um, included a, at the feedback of the staff, they wanted, didn't want to just do brainstorming, so we included a, a really nice workshop, a training in the afternoon that Mr. Walmart came in and gave an emotional mm -hmm. intelligence thing, and it was very, very well received, and uh, the group was informed. So it wasn't just a chance for us all to get together and talk. Uh, we did a strategic planning por portion. We also had a staff education and kind of bonding thing. So I want to appreciate uh, extend our appreciation for doing that. My pleasure. Um, and then we take all that, mash it together, and we make our strategic plan, which has been submitted um, to the legislature in, in terms of so it's off and running. Uh, also included, I'm not going to go through every single one, but these are the charges that we build for our internal teams. Um, everybody in the agency is on the, one of the teams, at least, if not more. And that um, goes back to a philosophy we've had for a while is that we can identify the problems and then we can fix them. It's not just you know me and David sitting in the front of the building trying to figure out all the problems. The folks that are doing the work do a great job of, of getting the stuff done. So everybody's engaged at every level. Um, one of the big ones for the board, uh, as far as a goal was, was outreach. And we're continuing to do uh, tons of that, including things, and this was a, a discussion item yesterday, uh, about EIT outreach and other things like that. So it's all included in ways that we can continue to look at it. I don't have the answers right here, but we're including that as part of the things. K-12 K University, EIT, industrial uh, outreach to government cities and whatnot, and many other things. So. Um, one thing I just want to say is really kind of cool, at NCWS they recognize that Texas does an amazing amount of outreach. We're in like the top five as far as our webinars uh, of other folks, and then uh, we're involved in NCWS's public outreach committee. I get to chair that this year. So they recognize a lot of the stuff that you've given us guidance to do. So that's a nice piece of feedback there. Um, scrolling through. So if there's any questions on, on that. What a question? We'll Comments? Um, the next is an NCWS annual meeting. We just got back those that attended. I want to say thanks to the board members and to our advisory uh, members who went. It was, it was well attended. Um, Texas is very engaged, as was, has already been mentioned, uh, and well recognized and I think respected at the national level where uh, people look to us for advice, ideas, input, and we're on, I believe, four committees this year, which is quite big. It's a big state, but there's, that's a lot for any one particular state. And, um, so some pretty impactful things. That's, that's nice to, to see in here. Um, I'll give a quick summary of some of the actions there. There are, of course, motions taken. Many of them uh, are related to minor changes to law and model law and model rules, so they're not their commas and some wordsmithing and that sort of thing. A number of things went through consent agenda. There's two exhibits here. One is NCWS's summary um, of the actions, but I'll go on to the Texas version of it, uh, which is follows that, I believe, is. Actually, it's added on to the very end of the item. Let me get to it here. Click, click, and if you tell us what pages. <laughs> yeah, actually, we added it to the very end because I wrote it after we put the packet together, so you actually have to click um, 402. on. Yeah, it's page 402 of 402. So it's the very last page. I'm trying to scroll to it, but if not. So essentially, I've got a bunch of acronyms and a bunch of other things. Uh, Jerry Carter, the executive director for NCWS, uh, announced his retirement earlier in the year. They put out a national search and looked for the person. Uh, Jerry's done an amazing job at the national level and really changed a lot of things. For those that haven't been on the board a long time, but some of you do remember, prior to Jerry, Texas was a little um, at odds with NCWS many times, and he, he helped and facilitated us 
working well together. He was an, uh, an MBA before, a board member administrator for North Carolina, so he really listened to um, the boards. And he's done a great job of making in City of Blessing a good position, and now we work very collaboratively to get things done. So uh, we'll, we'll miss him there, but they did a search, and they uh, announced <coughs> at the meeting that David Cox, the executive director for the Kentucky Board, will really? be the new CEO of NCWS moving forward. So he'll start in October. Jerry Carter will stay on until December, kind of as in the crossover handoff thing. Uh, we've known David for a long, long time, and David can good. Uh, That's a good talk relationship. about that. Uh, we think he's... Um, He's good, solid level. I think he's going to do good things in NCWS. Did you mention maybe you did? He's also a CPA. So really? Yeah, interesting. An engineer for CPA? He's not an engineer. He's, he's not an engineer. engineer. He's a CPA, so that's, that's, that's a good thing. No, uh, he's a really, really sharp guy. And we've, yeah. we've met him. I mean, I've known him ever since I've been going to these meetings. He's, he's a good choice. It'll be solid, but there'll be a, a new change, and then those, the things go along with it. So uh, we'll see how that goes, but we'll be definitely part of it and uh, engaged at every step of that. Dean Ringel from the Central Zone will be the president-elect coming forward. The interesting thing there is I don't know that we know Dean very much, so we're going to make sure we engage with him, and Texas is, is well-known. I think it's pretty clear, but we'll, um, I did get to meet him on the final day there, and so started talking with him, and he seems open to you know, all the good stuff there. Uh, let's see. Summarizing some of the other motions, one of the ones that was voted on was funding for MBAs. Right now, NCWS funds three board members to go to zone and annual meetings. They've decided to also fund the executive directors from each state. The idea there is to help ensure if there's any other kind of financial hurdles for a state to send their staff. Uh, but I think that's a nice recognition from the council that uh, staff is an important part of NCWS Absolutely. as well. So they'll be doing that. Can you explain education motion one? That failed, or was it... Okay, yes. Um, so a number of years ago, there was the BS Plus 30 movement and things like that, and it moved. Uh, it was part of model law and model rules for a number of years, the idea of adding, requiring additional education to become licensed. Um, <clears throat> it got put in model law and model rules uh, over the years, but no one implemented it. No state was implemented. So a couple <laughs> meetings ago, uh, the council agreed, since this is not an actual thing at the moment, to take it out of model law and model rules and put it in an appendix. If you ever want to do it, if you ever want to have it, here's some language you could use to do such a thing. So it was parked outside. Uh, this time around, a committee was working on language to clarify some stuff, so they made modifications to that appendix over here. Um, and so that was what the, the changes were. It was just some in, improvements, if you will, on language for a potentiality that currently is not in place. Mm -hmm. So uh, that passed. A couple other things. There's some committee composition deals on who should be on and off committees. Um, Texas did stand up and we made a, an amendment to one of the model law changes. It was minor language issues. Um, there's something else we brought up to the president-elect, and he said he would add it as a charge. So that's another example of you know, pointing out making good progress there. Um, one thing similar to the description I just made for BS Plus 30 is um, for a, a while, structural engineering as a separate type of thing has been peppered throughout the model on model rules. Uh, not all states require a separate structural engineering license. So at this time, uh, at this meeting, the UPLG committee, the one that does pretty much the language people, uh, the committee decided it was best to take that, they bundled it all up and moved it to an appendix as well. The idea here is now the model law and model rule speaks about professional surveyors and professional engineers. If your state needs or wants to license a structural engineer, here's some language you could use. But the implication before was since it was in model law and model rules, this is the way everybody should do it. Now it's if you need it, you can grab this piece and here's some stuff. So they moved it out, made some other changes to it, but they, it, it will now set outside of model law and model rules. So that was, I think, um, a beneficial thing to make it clear. There's a dozen states or whatever the handful need it, that's great, use it if you want, but it doesn't imply that nationally we're for or against it, it just needs to set. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a, some more discussion that I anticipated in the technology task force about uh, building information modeling, BIM. It's a, uh, those of you know what it is, I can't describe what it's not. Sorry? Oh. Um, 3D modeling of buildings. For buildings and looking for interference and other sorts of, of things. So they had a big long description. They had some ideas. So one of the items passed, the other ones failed or were tabled. Uh, last couple well, things. Um, yes, going. sorry. I'm shutting them along. Structural engineering thing. Sina and I attended the SEI meeting on the last day, and they discussed the same thing about the title act and the non title act, and that's where it came about. And the same discussion on the structural engineering, whether 
you want to have that designation on states who don't have it can use the MSF and uh, model law structure and you know MLSP behind their PE rather than the SC designation. Mm -hmm. There are certain states who do not even acknowledge the 16-hour structural exam mm -hmm. as a PE exam. So that's why it all came about. Mm -hmm. Just adding more comment on what right. that's what saying. Uh, wrapping up the uh, motions, but I do want to bring this up. At every annual meeting, we do uh, try and figure out what the hot button issues are going to be, and so you, you prepare for those, and other ones you think are pretty much not a big deal, you, you just watch, and it never turns out to be what you planned. So this one, there was kind of a motion brought up, I call it last minute, but it was laid on the table and we had time to consider it. NCWS occasionally is approached and requested for donations for to fund different uh, activities by different organizations, whether it's math counts, whether it's other sorts of issues around. And NCWS has been generous and open to those requests. Uh, this year, Engineers Without Borders came and asked for a very large amount of money from NCWS, the tune of $15 million for the board of directors. The board of directors said, wow, that is a large chunk of money, so let's bring, uh, they debated and eventually came down to an idea of three years, a three million dollars, essentially a million dollars a year for three years. Mm -hmm. That's a very large donation right. and input. There's a lot of things that would go with it, so they decided to bring it to the floor of the council, and now you've got 200 and some odd people that are going to discuss giving out money, and it turned into exactly what you think, an, an afternoon of, uh, of debate. So um, as the process, ultimately I'll give you the punchline at the end, NCAA did agree to provide that kind of funding to Engineers Without Borders. There were multiple amendments and changes and back and forth and ups and downs and all kinds of stuff. But in the process, uh, I think another good thing that came out of it was um, there were no restrictions on NCAA's board of directors on giving out donations or con contributions. Um, essentially, they had that in their in the range. There was no upper limit, nor were there a number of contributions. So a motion was made at the um, on the floor with a lot of changes, but essentially now the, the board of directors has a $500,000 total limit to be able to, to donate. Anything bigger has to come to the council. Uh, and this is not per organization. It's each year they've essentially got a fund of $500,000 available for donations. So I think it's a very positive outcome in the sense that now the board of directors has some guidance and guidelines on what they can do. And anything big, it comes to the, the full council on how to spend its money. So that was an unintended consequence, but I think it was a good thing. Uh, that concludes my NCAAS portion. Anyone who attended, <laughs> if they want to add on, contradict, <laughs> let you want, me. You want to say about the meetings in Houston upcoming? Yes, uh, the 2020, uh, last year I believe it was, uh, the council agreed to have a combined zone meeting. Those who know, there's an annual meeting in August, but there's also a zone or regional meeting in the spring. Normally there's four separate ones. Sometimes they're combined into two. Uh, we decided let's give it a shot on having a single large one. Everyone would come to one and, and kind of break up. They looked for places all over the uh, United States, and it looks like they're going to have it in Houston. It will all be coordinated and organized um, by NCWS, but we're going to make sure we're engaged in, uh, in that meeting and very visible in, in whatever it is. So we may be asking for... For example, a greeting from the, the chairman of the Texas board during that meeting or that sort of thing uh, will help out new ways staff as far as coordinating events and things. So we may be reaching out as we get closer. NCWS does an excellent job of coordinating and building the events, but we want to make sure that um, we can share a little he'll, Texas branding. You'll have to make a welcome speech. Remember, like, uh, Alejandro didn't know he was supposed yeah. to do a welcome yeah. speech, so you start writing your... Welcome speech. I just tell jokes, you know. Yeah. But that, that was an interesting <laughs> thing. This jokes. time around, the, Arizona, the meeting was in Arizona, and the Arizona chair did not know he was supposed to be giving a yeah. presentation. So oh, really? the president goes, and now and to the, give oh. you all a greeting, the chairman of the Arizona board, he comes running up. He's got like a polo shirt or uh, jeans like a on. He's like, hey, welcome to Arizona. Count and then he sat down. It was pretty much it. He, said, he, did, he did not know he was supposed to So it. we'll make sure you know. So anyway, that was that's that item. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer those. Those dates have not been set. I don't yeah. believe it's known. It is known. I don't have it. I apologize, but I'll share that. Again. I just wanted to point out uh, the the new president Jim Purcells in his acceptance speech uh, recognized a few people, and two of those were Bobby and Govin. That mm -hmm. I really name. appreciate my mm -hmm. name mm -hmm. at the banquet. So that's wonderful. 
All right. As I mentioned, we're very engaged and known at the national level, so that's good. Cool. Regional advisory meeting. The next one here is we had a successful meeting yeah. in Beaumont, and we are now having the Midland one. It's in the beyond planning stage. It is now happening stage. October 2nd is uh, that meeting. We've changed the agenda from last time, so it's pretty much as you see. There will be a lunch and a panel discussion with board members, so extend the invitation to any board member that wants to come uh, at this date. Uh, let me know. We'll help arrange travel if you need to fly, walk, get a pony, whatever you want to do. Uh, we can do that. A donkey. <laughs> We'll set that up and help you out. Uh, we have a couple people already. Uh, for those that didn't attend the Beaumont meeting, the panel essentially is we prepare some questions from us. We also poll those that are going to come, what, some things you'd like to know. And it's literally just a panel discussion. We'll look and say, I, I acted as the MC last time, and say, all right, here's a question. And look down and say, Dr. Wong, what do you think? And then what do you think? And what do you think? And, and it's, a, I think, very well appreciated. And the feedback was very solid from the audience. They liked hearing straight from the board members and all the different perspectives and all the different um, goings on. Instead of just listening to a speech from me, it's hearing it you know, from the board. So well received. And then after that, we'll do an ethics presentation. Right now, we've sent it out one... Uh We've sent out one email so far, and we've gotten about half our registration. It's a maximum number of 100 people, and I think we're up to 50 already. Wow. We'll send more wow. reminders as soon. And I've already engaged with the new dean wow. out there. Amazing. And he's going to give us an opportunity to possibly, if the students can't make it to the meeting, that we'll go and try and grab one of their classes. So school's starting soon, so I'll probably push that early September to get the That's professors engaged. And so whether they actually come to this or not, it'd be great if they did. But if not, we'll pop over to the to the campus and be able to talk to the students. So, Wonderful. Um, there you go. That's that. Well, I want to thank um, Ms. Norwood for helping out us as well. So you are the host, actually. I am. You are the host. Okay. So make sure we have good lunch. And, I know. We've right. got that. <laughs> Kyle's help. We've got it under control. All right. <laughs> um, the next item I had here was building plan update. We've already kind of covered what the building plan update is as far as the plan, so I'm not going to go through that all again. The last things are outreach this end of year. We're very close to the end of the year, but this year we're, didn't, we're about 500 people short from last year's um, max, but um, we're still up in the 22, 23,000 people. It's fun when I go to NCAAs to talk about that because the number of people we talk to is more than most states have licensees, period. So... Uh, we're leveraging everything we can. In fact, we've had some internal conversations about having more webinars because we fill up our four slots really, really mm -hmm. fast. We, what we talked about, 3,500 people in four days? Yeah. I mean, four events. Amazing. So we may go to six, and we may even have interim ones between our normal times. People eat this up. We actually had an issue that was raised at the enforcement forum on the last day of the NCAAs thing. Other states have for a long time said that you have to be on their provider list to provide mm -hmm. Uh, continue education in like Florida for example mm -hmm. they they open cases against people because their ethics was our ethics presentation <laughs> and they weren't allowing it and they decided that they were going to allow it so oh, well, that's, that's good to hear wow no. they're going to allow it wow, I said so sorry we, we talked to a lot of people so so I think that's a good thing people are looking to our yeah, product and they true. enjoy it and we get really good solid feedback you can look through the kudos list and things we get pretty high rankings from our outreach so that's good um, with that, I think the next thing is just the kudos list. Read through it at your leisure there to uh, see what the, the feedback is. Oh, one thing I'm going to mention, I believe we included it here. Also, if you're uh, staying up late one night, and uh, SPE, the Society of Petroleum Engineers, um, we attended last year at their annual meeting, and uh, Ms. Norwood was there, and it was really great having staff and, and people who know what's going on at the meeting. We asked if we could get a slot to give a presentation. They said they really don't do that, but if you write a paper, you can present that paper. So uh, Ms. Norwood and I threw well, together paper, abstract yes. and wrote a paper. Lance did all the work. And it's <laughs> now going to be in the proceedings, and so we're going to go up and cool. present. Published. Uh, be published, and, and it's about essentially... Um, Professional engineering and petroleum engineering wow, and how it's related. Cool. So I don't know what is it, 12, 14 pages, something like that. that um, put I that together, um, threw that in there, and so we'll be presenting. The other cool thing, and this may start a trend at NCWS as well. There, we're partnering with them at national meetings, and we're asking them to do that with other states. Which instead of us having a booth that says Board of Engineers on it, it says NCWS and Board of Engineers. They'll fund the the booth 
and then we will help staff the booth and then they can ask questions and we're well versed in NCWS licenses. Good. So and yes. they'll fund that to a half a million dollars, right? <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, what on that this big is a booth. Different line item. Yeah, working on that I have some suggestions. But so included in here is the paper if you'd like to read it, we'll be giving the presentation in the very near future. In September. <laughs> and something like that. So I thought that was an interesting uh, way to do it. But yeah, now we're we're spreading it out now. It's gonna be included in the the literature, if you will. Yes, have great. a read through if you like. Lots of graphs and stuff. He did all the work on the paper. Other than that, I think that actually ends it. All right. For a question, comments, for Lance? Good work. I appreciate that. Wonderful. Let's go to.